This is the new Villia Cento 10 SL, and it's the bike that myself and Hank used in our epic coast-to-coast -coast ride. Well, we, did, we had one each, it, we didn't share the same bike. Anyway, I'm sure you'll agree, it's an absolute stunner, isn't it? So I'm gonna do a full bike check video on it for you, go through all the details and weigh it with the GCN Scales of Truth. You may remember last year, I did a first look video on the Villia Zero SLR, which is the Italian company's lightweight climbing bike. The Cento 10 is the brand's aero bike platform. Now, before I go into the details on it, I think we should uh, have a vote, hot or not. Click on screen to the link that takes you through to a poll in the app and you can vote if you'd like. I mean, to be honest, I think it's a bit of a, a, bit of a rhetorical question, but anyway. Villiers sponsors the Astana Pro team and they have the Zero SLR and the Cento 10 at their disposal, but they don't use this one because this one is a second tier frame set. It's the SL rather than the Pro that the pros use. And as a result, the carbon frame is slightly different. So it's the exact same shape. It uses the same molding technology. It's as aerodynamic, but it uses a slightly less sophisticated carbon layup. The NH Mod Carbon Layup, as it's called by Villiers, results in a slight weight penalty over the Pro model. But according to Villiers, it's not that much, only around 150 grams in an equivalent size. And this small trade-off results in a bike that is considerably more affordable than the top end model. And it still has, you know, as I said, the same frame shape. So you've got all the hallmarks and features of a modern aero road bike. We've got a nice neat front end, no levers, for through axles or anything, keeping it very tight. NACA uh, tube profiles to maximize aerodynamics, drop seat stays and lots of integration. Other differences from the Pro model include the removal of a plate on the down tube, which would normally be located around here. This was used to house junction boxes and other stuff like that. Now by removing it, the frame is simplified and that also helps keep the cost down. Because this is a DI2 model, we now have the junction box neatly in the bar end stopper, which is nice. Another difference is the cockpit. So on this model, we've got this modular two-piece uh, from Ritchie, which is really nice. Still does a good job of hiding all the cables and keeping everything neat and tidy, but is less bling than the one-piece integrated aero bar and stem that's fully carbon that comes on the top of the range model. Arguably though, this kind of bar and stem offers greater adjustment and more practicality. And Villia has the option to pick the size you want at the point of purchase. So I've gone for a 120 stem and a 40 wide bar, as per my preference. The group set on this bike, as you may have spotted, is Ultegra DI2, but Villia offers a range of options uh, in this particular frame set, starting with mechanical 105, going all the way up to this one. And the chain set is a 5034 compact paired with an 1128 cassette. And I can tell you that was much needed on the 33% brutal gradients of Hard Knock Pass. Now the wheels we've changed because they're not stock these. We often preach at GCN that, well, one of the best upgrades you can make is an upgrade to your wheel set. So we decided to practice what we preach and did exactly that and swapped in these, which are Hunt's Limitless 48s. These carbon wheels are 48 millimeters deep. I mean, the clue's in the in the name, uh, but they're also tubeless ready out the box. So we've set them up tubeless with the Pirelli TLR tubeless tires. And the big thing about them is the internal rim width is massive. It's 22.5 millimeters wide. You know, most wheels, well, wheels a few years ago were 14. So now this is massive. And the advantage of this is it allows your tires to sit wider. This means you can run them at a slightly lower pressure, which increases comfort and grip, which is ideal on a long endurance ride with technical roads. And they're actually optimized these rims for 28 millimeter tires. So a 28 millimeter tire will sit flush with the rim. I'm a big fan of road tubeless setups. They keep getting better and it's just the ability to, to run lower pressures and have that added puncture protection as well is, uh, is a massive advantage. They also have these rather tasty ceramic speed uh, bearings in, which sound awesome. So I'll just do you a quick free hub sound check. And the other reason why we decided to put some hunt wheels on the bike is because, well, they're what Hank raced on uh, with 28 millimeter tires 
as well when he was a pro and he just won't stop banging on about them. Now the bike I have here is a size large. If, if you're interested, I'm six foot one um, and this is my size. I'm gonna weigh it because I'm keen to see how much it weighs. Just take the Wahoo head unit off, um, but still with pedals and bottle cages on there. Place your bets now. That's coming at 8.14, which is well, decent for an aero bike with hydraulic disc brakes. Other details on the bike, I've put my speed play dual sided pedals on there. I've got the Wahoo Rome head unit, which just clips on with a standard mount, and also my lightweight Topeak carbon bottle cages. And this paint job, I, well, I, it's, it's not custom. Despite the fact that it seems to seemingly match the GCN kit perfectly, this is a stock option. And I love it, I think it looks amazing. I'm a big fan of red and white bikes, but something that I hope comes across in, in the shots is this isn't just a standard gloss red. It's got kind of like gold in it or either as a gold layer underneath it that's kind of like coming through. But these sort of gold sparkly bits, when the sun catches it, it just really pops and it, it just looks amazing. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this look at the bike and the wheels. And if you'd like to, then you can vote in the poll whether you think it's hot or not. And if you'd like to see the bike in action, well, check out the epic coast to coast ride uh, that myself and Hank did. It, it was just an incredibly stunning route. And um, well, without doubt, the best ride I've done all year. So well, I hope you enjoy it. And um, yeah, I'd recommend doing the route yourself as well. I'll see you later.